Hello friends and welcome to Zentango class number 72. We have live class going on tonight. We also have um, next month in September on the 9th and the 25th. I'm just going to start with my box. Whatever shape you want to make is fine. I'm going to switch over to my larger marker um, because I want my first section to be a little bit darker, a little bit more pronounced. So I'm going to start in the top corner here, and I'm going to kind of arch and then loop. And then arch and loop the other way, arch and loop, and you're going to zigzag. And you're always going to go, like I'm going to draw down, and the loop is going to go up and then over. Up and then down. Up and then over. Up and then down. And you're just going to keep looping back and forth. These loops can be as large as you'd like. You can make them really, really skinny. Uh, you can make them as fat or as thick as you want. Then I'm going to go back and I'm just going to color in all of those loop pieces. Perfect, just like that. Looks great. I'm going to switch back to my regular pen. In my case, it's a Sharpie, but you get the idea. And I'm going to start with the, just, I'm just going to pick a bigger section here so you can see it a little better. I'm just going to kind of loop and make these um, little V shapes. And I'm just going to keep filling them in until I get the whole section. I want a little bit more space in between mine. If, the closer you make these little arched shapes, these little wedges, um, the darker the, the pattern will look. So if you want it to be a little bit more light, you just put maybe one or two uh, little arches in each of these sections. You obviously, you just fill them in until they're, or keep going until they're filled in. Um, but if you want it to be look a little bit darker, the more arches or these little V shapes that you put in there, um, the darker it will look. So I'm, I probably, in my big sections, I only have room for about three. I think there's one that might have four. Um, we'll see how it goes, but I'm just gonna kind of do this little radiating or um, they're not overlapping, I don't know where it is. They just keep getting smaller. Shrinking. Right, that's a good one. This is a nice easy pattern. It's something very simple. Um, if you have a really large section it looks kind of neat because you can make the zigzag go through. Um, it, it works in any shape. It doesn't need to be a square of course. So if you have kind of an odd shaped one you can kind of just kind of zigzag through there and, and put this in there. You can, of course, work straight up and down if you want the pattern to go up and down. It doesn't need to be diagonal. So you can certainly play with it however you want. So it's a nice, simple, easy one that looks really cool when, once it's in. I like it. I'm going to go on to the second one. I'm gonna just going to draw another box. You can draw whatever shape you want, of course. I'm going to switch over to a pencil. I'm going to press harder than you should. Um, actually, it doesn't, it doesn't matter too much, I guess. But I'm just going to draw a tube. So mine's about a half inch thick uh, or wide. And it's just going to kind of arch across my space. And I'm just going to keep drawing um, these little tubes that kind of jump behind each other. See how I'm drawing here? When I get to the line, I stop and then continue on so it looks like it goes behind. I'm just going to fill up this entire section with different size tubes. You can have different um, thicknesses of tubes as well. So if you want to have like a half inch one, and maybe the ones way in the back are maybe three quarters of an inch or a little bit skinnier or whatever it is that you want, you can alter this, the, the width of the tubes. They don't have to all be the same. I'm just going to kind of stick with approximately the same size tube. But again, you can, you can mix and match that however you want. You may have less tubes than I have, that's just fine. You may have more, it's up to you. I'm going to switch back to my pen and I'm going to draw these um, circle sections. So these are the little dividing lines, so how you break up the tubes. And I'm going to draw, um, each of these circles touches the one next to it. And then on the end, the left and the right edge, 
you want to have a circle that, or a little oval that goes over the edge so it looks like it goes around. So this one here goes beyond the line of the two, the outside line, the pencil line. So I'm just going to draw my circles inside and then go back on the right side and the left side and make sure that I have a circle over the edge of each one. My spacing is the same uh, as I go down my tube. Yours do not have to be. You can have some closer together, some further apart. It's entirely up to you how you want to do it. I think I can squeak one more in the end here. I'm just going to kind of draw it down at the bottom here. Perfect. All right, so now we're going to divide up our tubes here and kind of put the pattern inside each tube. And again, you can mix and match this. You don't have to do what I'm doing here. So you start in the bottom left corner and you arch like a wave up to the top right corner in each of the sections. So you're just going to kind of go through each of those, have them all be the same. And now I'm going to go back down the side and just going to fill in the uh, outside edge of my tube there. And of course, this, that line doesn't go through the circles. You know, the circles stay as they are. On the top left section um, of each of these, uh, it's going to be the top left space of each of these sections, I'm just going to draw diagonal straight lines. They just come in straight. The spacing is up to you. You can have them a little bit wider, a little bit further apart, or you can have them really close together. Mine are, I would say, moderately close together. I don't know. Just kind of a nice distance from each other. So all the top left sections throughout all of my tubes are going to have the same thing. The bottom right section, or this bottom bottom right triangle, is going to mimic the arched um, wave line that I'd use to divide these little sections here. So it's going to mimic that arched shape. You can kind of see on the left side a little bit bigger that they, they're kind of a waved or an arched line in there. Again, you can mix and match how you, how you decorate your tubes. If you don't want them to have this pattern, you know, you can do some kind of a tribal look in there. You can do where one of these sections is colored in black or the circles are colored in black. You can completely alter each one of, and each tube can be different. So this one here can have one pattern and then the other tubes can be all different behind it. It's entirely up to you how you want to play with this pattern. So that's the basic pattern that I'm going to replicate on all the tubes. I'm just going to start by dividing it up with the circles and then I'm going to put the, you know, the dividing diagonal line in and then keep going with the rest of the pattern. So when you get to these ones uh, quickly before where they go behind another one, you want to, I'm just going to keep the spacing the same on all of my tubes so you don't have to, but the, the, two, the circle line would be right behind those other ones. So you have to kind of imagine where it would be and sort of jump a little bit to get your spacing correct. So you kind of get a feel for that as you go.
looks great. So now I'm going to use my eraser and just go back and erase any of those little edge pieces that I see there. Um, if you're coloring in your background section, you may not have to do this. So just kind of want to go through really quick and just make sure I don't miss any there. Another little one there. And then I'm actually just going to show you what it looks like if you color in the background. So you can see on the left what it's going to be, but you, you can color in this back section. If you need something that's a little bit more contrasting, um, look at, let's say if you're doing a Zentangle pattern and something next to it is kind of all the same shade or hue, you want to have um, maybe a little bit more contrast or dramatic pop or whatever. So you can color in this background white. Um, or like I said in the beginning, you could change these tubes so they have a little bit more of a dark pattern on them um, or some little, I don't know, black wedges or you could color in all the circles black. It's up to you what you want to do with it, but you can, you can kind of make it pop off by, by coloring in the background. So again, just to see that you can certainly play around with it and, and see what you like. So I'm not going to color in the rest of it, it's just kind of to show you that you could do white or black, see how they look differently, it's up to you what you want to do with that one. Um, now I'm going to switch to, actually I'm going to keep my my, uh, my big marker here, and I'm going to draw a series of ovals. So I'm going to, they're, they're flat, they're flat little ovals that go across my paper. They're probably spaced about a half inch apart, but you want the ovals to all be approximately the same size. Um, obviously they don't have to be exactly, but approximately the same size and the same spacing across. So what we're going to be drawing is um, like a twisted rope type of look. So mine is going to arch here, my, my line, you can see it dips down there. Now I'm going to do the exact same thing in another row on the bottom. So again, this is probably about a half inch apart. Yours can be a little bit closer, a little bit further apart depending on what you need for your Zentangle, but it's kind of like half by half. It makes kind of a grid pattern. Looks good. So now I'm going to switch back to my regular pen. And we're going to start doing the actual text uh, twist here. So I'm going to stop at the, start at the top of my first oval, and I'm going to arch down below the second row on the second oval. I'm going to keep going from one above, arch down to the one below. Now the bottom line goes below the little oval. This one here I don't have a match for, so I'm just going to kind of let it hang there. Now we're going to draw the pattern above, the twist above. So it's about, I don't know, maybe a quarter of an inch. We're going to arch up and come down below the next oval. So I'm going to start here on the top and arch down below the next oval. So you're going to kind of keep doing this bubble pattern until you get all the way across. Make sure you come down below the oval. And just kind of watch your spacing, kind of make sure your loops are about the same. And that one will just die off there again. And the same thing goes on the bottom. I'm going to start on the top of the oval, and then I'm going to stop just underneath the next one. So I start at the top, arch down, and stop. And then go back to the next one. And you see how it kind of fills it in? I'm just going to keep going all the way across with this lower bubble piece. And that one there at the end doesn't have anything. Make sure that you go back and fill in that little... Uh, first piece and then any of the little gaps that you might have after that. Now to just make it pop a little bit more, you certainly can be done at this point, we're going to add a little shading. So I'm going to do the shading, just a small little shadow line where it goes under another piece. So it's going to be on the right side of these top bubbles and then on the little left side, right? So it's basically right around the oval, the dark um, colored in ovals. This one's going to be the top right, and then also the bottom left of each oval. And then this um, opposite on the ones below, it's going to be the bottom left, I'm sorry, the top left, excuse me, and the bottom right. So I'm just going to smear it a little bit with my finger, that's completely optional as well, it just kind of gives it a little bit softer shadow. I'm just going to keep working my way across any place where it goes under, focusing mostly around the oval sections.
more quick smear on these bottom pieces just to kind of soften it slightly and you're all set. You can add color, you can add a lot of texture to this twist, you can do any kind of variation that you want. You can have it go in a circle, you can go between two zentangle sections, it's entirely up to you what you do with these patterns. Thank you very much for joining me today. Again, we do have live class on September 9th and September 23rd, if you wish to join us. Um, there will be registration available online for that. Um, otherwise, I hope that you are staying safe, hope that you're staying happy and healthy, and I hope to see you in the library very soon. Have a great day.